Welcome to the AR Performance Squash Advantage, hosted by me, Ahad Braza, a former PSA Touring Pro turned elite performance mentor and coach. I break down tactics, technique, fitness, and mindset by analyzing players from the past and present, both men and women. I aspire to teach, empower, and guide transformation. Let's get started. What's up, everyone? In today's video, I'm going to show you a comparison between Jan Shekhan and Ali Farag's movement into the front left corner of the court. Now, Jan Shekhan is renowned for being one of the best movers ever. And a lot of the modern players, including Rami and Farag and several others, have actually credited Jan Sher and mentioned that they've studied his movement. So it's really cool to see how similar their movement patterns look, including not just the movement, but also the racket prep and other, other such technical details. So in a moment, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the clip that I'm analyzing in regular speed and then in progressively slower motion. As always, I have the request of you to please write down everything that you see because that will enhance your learning. So let's get into it. Clip number one, real speed. Let's watch it slightly slower. And now we're gonna watch it even a bit slower. Okay, so like I said, I hope you've made notes of everything that you saw because now we're going to get into the super slow-mo detailed breakdown of John Sher and Ali Farag's movement. So now as you can see, the, the positioning is a little bit different because Farag's hit a loose ball, Paul Cole's in the middle, Farag's a bit more to the left of the court, and Jahangir is in at the front right and John Sher is square on the tee. So a little bit different start. But you're going to, as you already know, the movement looks quite similar. So from here, you're going to notice both players split step in the air. I hope you're seeing a trend. Everyone split steps before they have to make a, a movement. Unless it's no pressure and they know exactly where the ball is going, they may not split, but the vast majority of the time they're splitting. And there's some fitness science behind this called the stretch shortening cycle and things like that. I'm not going to get into those details, but the program that I'm creating and there's a link to sign up to be notified about it, takes all of these scientific elements into account when I'm creating the program. And now here's a little nuance. So Jahangir played a wicked trickle ball, so John Sher thought that the ball was going to the front right. That's why you see him plant his left foot first. So he's going to the right, but it, the ball, because of the trickle balls, the ball actually comes back towards the left of the court. So you're going to see John Sher having to make us a, a hard adjustment, whereas Farag knows exactly where the ball is going because Paul Cole is playing it into the obvious part of the court. So let's see this unfold. So you see Farag knew where the ball was going, so he already had his right foot down and he's pushing off to get into the front corner. John Sher started going to the right, then had to readjust and plant his right foot down to now be able to push forward to the left. So already from here, John Sher is under significantly more pressure than Farag is, and you're going to see how that plays out a bit. And see, there's that push from John Sher. Now he's moving forward. Both players, I mean, this is obvious, but mo both players, once they push from their right, their left foot comes because they're both going to land eventually in the lunge on their right leg. So it's a quick little plant the right foot, take one step with the left, and then lunge with the right. So it's a two-step close stance movement to the front left of the court. And there you see John Sher moving, Farag moving. Now notice their racket prep is almost identical. They're both going in for a counter drop. Their positions are going to be a little bit different, and how they hit the ball is a bit different, and I'm going to show you all of that later on but you can see that their prep their racket is actually coming at a slightly upward angle so that they can kind of cut around the ball and then from there you're noticing that Farag is actually sort of leaping into the ball it's a bit up and then down into it he has a little bit more time John Sher is under a lot of pressure so he's just staying low and going straight in to the shot 
and then what we notice from here is let's look at their body position both players their chest is open to the front and the left so almost into that corner the racket face is open for both players you can see John Sher. the only difference is that John Sher is coming under the ball and I talk about I was going to talk about this later but I'll mention it now John Sher is actually taking the ball in front like this because he's under so much more pressure and the ball is significantly further forward so he has to get under and guide it into that front corner Farag is not under as much pressure so he's actually able to come sort he's still taking it early but it's kind of beside him so he doesn't have to get his wrist here and under he can actually hit through the shot so that's one significant difference between the two players in this position and then the other thing that you'll notice is that John Sher did actually put his hand down and if you notice in a previous video of mine and I'll link it up here in a previous video I showed Jahangir under a tremendous amount of pressure actually in this exact same clip he's about to take an epic lunge Jahangir does not put his left hand down even though he's under a lot of pressure you, you notice that John Sher is putting his left hand down which is something that a lot of the modern players do when they're under a lot of pressure I showed this in Sherbini's clip I've showed this in several other players clips you notice Farag on the other hand, because he's not under a lot of pressure, he is not putting that left hand down. He is using it as a counterbalance. So that's an interesting thing. It seems like some of these modern players may have gotten this tip by watching John Sher actually move. And then from there, you see both players recovering. And you notice that Paul Cole and Jahangir's movement looks almost identical. Cole's a little bit more to the left of the court, but it's almost identical. And there's, there is one difference. You're going to notice that Paul Cole goes right, left, open stance. Jahangir does that shuffle. So he goes right, left, and then shuffles forward to go close stance. So let me just rewind that a second. And Jahangir is under more pressure and he chooses to go closed and this is the same clip I was mentioning where Jahangir even though he's under a lot of pressure he does not put his left hand down he keeps his left hand up which probably makes his recovery significantly harder because he's having to absorb all of that momentum with his leg and his core and then we go from there and you just see the difference in the movement and the position again Cole is not under as much pressure and the technique and this footwork is a little bit different but now let's check out one more thing and this is now getting into some of the sports specific like technical and tactical pieces of the game so if we watch this video again you can watch the movement you can see what we just discussed as well as we go through this because it's going to play for 15 20 seconds before i talk more all the stuff we talked about the right foot plant John Sher under a bit more pressure because he misread the ball. Jahangir had a lot of deception. And then you see the movement of Farag and John Sher looking very similar. John Sher is under more pressure. But now here's something that was interesting. Farag and John Sher are hitting the ball at almost the exact same time. There's the ball for John Sher once he's hit it. There's the ball after Farag's hit it. And I found this interesting. I'm not saying that one player is faster or slower than the other. All I thought that this was a really cool indication of how fast Jan Shea really was because he started after Farag because he was thrown off by the deception and hit the ball at almost identically the same time as Farag, which means he moved significantly faster. Now, Farag could have moved faster if he was under more pressure, but all I'm saying is that Jan Shea was quite fast even 30 years ago. And then from here, we're going to notice something else. Now, we're seeing two different types of counter drops. So here's where we're getting into squash-specific tactics. You see Farag's playing the ball on the front wall. So it goes front wall, floor, and ideally rolls into the side wall so that it's glued to the side wall. By doing that, he's going to limit Paul Cole's options. And Paul Cole, he might even squeeze an error out of Cole, 
or Cole, his only chance is going to be to like scrape that ball into a counter drop, or if he's able to like scrape, push, and lob that ball down the left hand side. On the other side, Jahangir is actually, uh, John Shear is going with an angle. So he's playing into the front wall, going for the nick. And the, the two shots are very different. If you miss this a little bit, the ball is going to roll back out into the middle of the court. So this is arguably higher risk. This ball, unless you hit it very loose, this ball is staying closer to the side wall. So it's lower risk the way Farag's hit it, minimizing angles, potentially higher risk, but then if you hit it correctly and you catch that nick, very high reward. So just two different styles. Um, it also depends on your angle with which you're hitting it, and then it's just preference. And you see Farag's ball lands over here. It's not super tight. If it had, if he had a slightly greater angle, it would have been a little bit tighter to that wall. John Shear's ball is catching the side wall, and then see it's catching the side wall there, and then coming out. And there, it's it's actually coming back towards Jahangir over here, whereas Cole is just playing that counter drop from like three floorboards or so. And there you see it. Cole hits that counter drop, and he has less pressure. Jahangir is under more pressure, and that ball is coming back out at him. And actually, one more thing: like if you know your opponent takes certain lines to the front corner, you may actually want to go for that nick versus the ball hugging the side wall. And I'll give you a classic example. Say you have an opponent that runs directly into that front corner, and I'm going to use a boast as an example here. If you hit a three wall boast and it goes side wall, front wall, side wall, it's going to actually come back down into the middle of the court. So if your opponent likes to just run into that corner and that ball is coming right at them, it's going to be at their feet and they're going to have a lot of difficulty. So once you become more aware of the way your opponent moves and you have enough ball control to do these sorts of things, you can actually deliberately choose different types of shots to mess with your opponent beyond just the basic tactics of hitting into open space. So I wanted to share that with you guys so you guys could see the difference and see actually if you watch Paul Cole's counter drop, he did what Farag was originally trying to do, which was just put that ball on the front and get that ball along the side wall. Now the difference in the two situations obviously was Cole hit it when the ball was already quite close to the side wall. Farag had far more of an angle when he hit it. So for Farag, the angle was such that it's difficult to get that ball right into uh, hugging the side wall. He could have, he was arguably in a better position to hit that nick drop. But now Cole, because the ball was already closer to the side wall, could get that ball to hug on the second bounce, putting Farag under a lot of pressure. So there you have it, guys. I hope you found a lot of value in seeing the similarities between the players' movements. And then also when we talked about the tactics of the different types of drops, how they can work, when they work, awareness about your opponent and their movement as well as your skills. And when you start bringing it all together, you can actually have a significant impact in the way the game unfolds. As always, if you like these videos, please hit the thumbs up button, please subscribe, please comment, please share them. And again, I'm hoping to start to get some donations so that I can create more of these. The more I can create, the more you guys can learn and apply and hopefully enjoy the game even more than you already do. Have a great one and I will see you in the next video.